You already know that you need to be VOD reviewing your tournaments, but you still don't because when you do it, it's boring and it takes forever, but it doesn't have to. If you actually learn how to use the replay mode, you can easily see the important parts of the match and quickly skim through to learn from the important parts and move on to the next. Learning a few hotkeys and settings will save you a ton of time, like the action feed that showed you every single death that happens in the match. Just putting it on 4x or skipping the endgame isn't going to cut it. So here's everything you need to know about replays. First, when choosing a file to review, there are two different kinds of replays, a personal replay and the public replay. Personal replays are what's saved in your replay tab. These kinds of replays have more limited information than public replays. Personal replays don't have any information about things that are too far from you, and they oftentimes are missing other information like what's in your inventory, etc. So always use a public replay file when available. Public replays are always available for tournaments by either finding your name in the tournament itself within Fortnite, or by using a third-party site like Fortnite Tracker. To get it within Fortnite, go to the Compete tab, find the tournament, then go to the Session Leaderboard and find your name. Then hit Match History and watch on the game you want to see. To get it from Fortnite Tracker, go to Events, find the tournament, and find your name. Then right-click on the icon next to the game you want to watch and click Copy Link Address. Then in Fortnite, you go to Career, Replays, and View Streaming Replay. This is where you paste in the link address. But before you hit Accept, you have to delete everything up until the slash, that way it's just the replay code. Once you're in the replay, you'll probably start off looking at someone who isn't you. The quickest way to find yourself is to open the map with either M or your normal map button, and then sorting the list of names alphabetically. You can sort players by team number, name, or technically by number of points, but a lot of the times the points are bugged, so it doesn't really work. If you do actually want to see who's in the lead, the best way is to press F8 to open the scoreboard. This one's automatically sorted by each team's total eliminations. So now that you're diving in, it's a good time to look at the six different viewing modes. It starts in third person, but there's also gameplay, drone free, drone attach, drone follow, and battle map. You can cycle through them with C or R3, or go straight to the one you want by pressing the numbers 1 through 6 on the keyboard. Third person is locked onto your character, but allows you to click and drag or use the right stick to change the angle you're watching from. Drone free is just a free camera that you can move however you want. For some reason, unlike everything else in replay mode, it actually does use the keybinds from your settings to go forward, backwards, left, and right. Most things like moving the camera up and down is usually permanently locked to the default of Q and E. But anyway, you can change the drone speed with minus and plus, and you can zoom in and out by either scrolling or pressing Z and X. Drone free is really useful, but sometimes you'll find that when you initially switch to it, the camera is way outside of zone. So remember you can always reset the camera back to the player by pressing R. Drone attach mode is the same as drone free, except when the player moves, the camera also moves to follow them. And drone follow mode is also just drone free, except when the player moves, the camera turns to follow them. Now battle map is completely different. It shows you the entire movement path of the player throughout the entire game, from the moment they jump off the bus till the very end of the game. And it shows every single zone circle, so it's perfect for quickly seeing a player's loot route or rotations in general. It's also perfect for skipping straight to your off spawn fight. You can right click any of the spheres to skip straight to that part of the match. So instead of trying to click and guess on the slider, use battle map to snap straight to when you hit the ground. If you want to swap to any of your teammates perspectives instead, you can use I and O or K and L to cycle through, or just click on their names. After your spawn fight, easiest way to skip to important parts is by using the action feed. Rather than cycling through all your teammates to try and see who gets the next elim, you can press Y to see all knocks and eliminations that happen throughout the entire game. Then when you click the elim you want to see, it'll go straight to a few seconds before it happens so you can see how it happened. You can technically also go to any specific time by pressing T, but for some reason it makes you put it in seconds. So you can't put in 1224, you would instead have to know that it's 744 seconds in. But enough with the keybinds, let's look at actual camera settings since that's what will determine how easy it is to see what's going on, both in fights and especially in endgames. The first tab is simple, just leave auto exposure on, otherwise it'll get too dark or too bright to see sometimes. And ignore focal length, it's the same as zooming in and out. Now on the second tab, the important ones are player outlines and share lens settings. Player outlines lets you see everyone through walls. Usually you'll want this on especially if you're using drone free, but sometimes you may want to turn it off so that you can only see what you could actually see in game. Share lens settings changes whether or not swapping players will reset the camera. So like when you're looking around in drone free in an in game and want to see what someone else had in their inventory, you would click on them. But it's annoying because the camera then snaps to them and you have to move it back. Turning this on makes it so that the camera doesn't do that, so you can look around and swap to whoever you want without the camera resetting. Turning this on makes watching in games so much better. And if you ever do need the camera to snap to the person you click on, you can always just press R anyway. Storm effects, high quality effects, and damage effects you just want off. Replay mode loads slow enough already, we don't need more bloat. 
First place outline is supposed to show who has the most points, but we all know points are bugged more often than not, so it usually won't work anyway, so turn this off. Save zone opacity may seem to not do anything to the zone, but that's because it only changes how it looks when the camera is outside of the zone looking into the zone. I recommend somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. Opaque enough that you can tell where the zone is, but not too thick that you can't see what's happening inside of the zone. Session ID watermark just turns on and off the text in the bottom right. It doesn't really matter if it's on or off. And lastly, if you're in third person mode, you'll also notice these two extra settings in this tab, auto follow and distance the subject. Normally in third person when the player turns, nothing happens. But with auto follow, it will try and make sure the camera stays behind the player, either aggressively with auto or more slowly with lazy mode. And distance the subject is, as it sounds, how far the camera is from the player. The third tab though, changes entirely based on the viewing mode you're in. It's not available at all in third person mode. It's only available for drone free, drone attach, and drone follow. The only important thing in this tab though, is drone direct movement. If you're like me, you get annoyed every time the camera resets and you have to max out the drone speed again because it's so slow. Well now you can increase the default speed. Drone direct movement changes the camera movement from gradual to linear. You could leave this off so it's more smooth, but turning it on allows you to change velocities. The linear velocity is what changes the base drone speed. You can still speed it up and slow it down like before, but this value is the base that it's changing from. So if you set it really low, even if you set drone speed to 4x, it'll be really slow. But if you set it high, then even 0.25 will be fast. I'd recommend at least 3.0 because anything lower and players can just outrun the camera while you're trying to follow them. Rotation velocity is the same thing but for turning. Low makes it turn slow and high makes it turn super fast. I just leave mine on the default. All this Dutch angle stuff you can ignore, it just tilts the camera and unless you're trying to make some cinematic or something, I don't know why you'd want to do that. But make sure Dutch control scheme is off. If it is on, then your minus and plus will instead tilt the camera instead of changing drone speed. The fourth tab is also just for cinematic stuff. Change time of day and the lighting. If you are doing cinematic stuff, you should also know that you can toggle on and off player count, team info, and the elimination feed with F2, F3, and F6 respectively. Finally, the fifth tab is arguably the most important, but there's also a lot of it, so let's start from the top. Nameplates, on. It's what lets you see players' names and health. Team color, also on. It just makes it much easier to tell who's on whose team. Now the low detail, arrow, and off distances all work together. There are four different UI options. High detail, low detail, arrow, and none. By default, everything will be on high detail. This gives the most information, but in in-game it's just so cluttered that you can't see anything. The low detail slider sets the distance where player's info will turn to low detail mode instead. Low detail mode still shows the name, but it doesn't show player's health. Then the arrow slider sets where low detail mode turns into the arrow. And off distance is where the UI for that player turns off entirely. I personally don't like the low detail mode at all because if I'm close enough that I want to see their name, I also want to see their health. So I turn low detail to the max to make it never show. Then I turn arrow distance down to where I want the names to disappear. Another useful option is when you just have arrows to see where everyone is. To do that, turn arrow distance to the minimum and the other two to the max. Make sure to turn on arrow team color though so that you can see who's together or who's solo. Adjust scaling changes how much or how little the UI size changes as you get closer or further away from them. I feel like the UI is too big by default so I lower all the maximums to 0.8 but it's all preference. You can honestly just leave adjust scaling off if you don't want to deal with it. These are the settings I like though. For the last options, squad ID just shows the number of the team the players belong to. But if you have on team colors, it's really easy to tell who's on whose team. Occasionally, there will be two teams next to each other that have the same color, so I still leave it on hold. That way, if you need, you can hold alt to see their numbers for a second. Display session ranks is supposed to show what place each team is in based on their points, but again, the points are always bugged, so just leave it off. And display augment HUD, I assume is supposed to show augments, but augments haven't been in the game for a while, so I can't really test it. I'll put an update in the description if they ever add augments back, but for now, this setting doesn't do anything. Now, there are a few works, let's call them, to be aware of. The first is that most of the hotkeys and binds are not remappable, so unless you have default keybinds, you might have some hotkeys not work for you unless you either unbind something or plug in a controller to use. So for example, you move the camera up and down with Q and E, but E is normally my map button, so I would have to unbind my map just to be able to move the camera up. That's why I recommend plugging a controller and keyboard if you have them when viewing replays. Doing just the controller isn't ideal because there are some functions that you can't click on, you have to press a hotkey to use, like Y for the action feed. But the second book, uh, quirk, is that skins sometimes don't load. So if after skipping through, everyone becomes default skins, you just kind of deal with it. Sometimes it'll eventually fix itself, but it can take a while. It's best to just ignore it. Next, sometimes the number of charges left in an item will be incorrect. It most often happens with items like grapplers, void masks, and stuff like that. Lastly, there are a lot of performance bugs. 
Sometimes it'll just freeze for a second and then catch up later, there's literally nothing you can do about it. And sometimes the entire client will just crash when trying to scrub through the timeline. I have found that it crashes less often when I use the time skip to scrub through instead of clicking on the bar, but even with that it still crashes sometimes. You just kinda have to work with it. Now I just covered literally all of the options for replay mode, but really you only want to remember the parts that you're going to use. Because all of the camera settings will save between replay files so that you can review all of your games without having to set a bunch of stuff every time. But once you restart your client, the settings reset. You unfortunately can't keep them forever. So don't try and set every single setting I covered in this video, just remember the important ones that'll save you the most time. Like probably share lens settings and some of the UI setting distances. I'll leave everything on screen though so you can choose the ones you want. Thanks for watching.